Welcome back to the new features video series for Cubase 7. In this chapter, we'll demonstrate the new features in the Edit Channel Settings window. You open the Channel Settings window in Cubase 7 the same way as in previous versions. That's where the similarity ends. Steinberg's overhaul and upgrade of this window is amazing. You now have immediate access to nearly every aspect of the channel. Now, at first glance, it seems like the same basic layout. You have some information along the top, inserts to the left, EQ in the center, and sends on the right, plus a meter and fader. But look closer. Let's start at the top. You have a complete input select menu, allowing you to change this signal's input without leaving the editor. Next, you have the ability to step through your tracks without having to close and reopen the window. The next block has three functions. You can open the VST instrument. In this example, we're looking at an instrument track. You can rename the channel, and you can set or redesignate its color. Now, if stepping through your channels would take longer than you like, you can now access the channel search utility from inside the editor, allowing you to jump to any channel without closing the window. You have the ability to adjust the channel's output routing, again, with an associated search and filter capability. The next buttons let you jump to the last and next edited channels. And you can even enable the output chain. You have direct access to the library of track presets, and the same functions menu that we saw in the mix console is available to you right here. If we jump over to the left, you can see we have an insert tab with the ability to load an entire effects chain. And we can call up and search for any insert effect with one click. But at the bottom is a tab for routing and the ability to open the routing editor. Back at the top, we can switch to strip. This tab lets us enable all of the channel strip components without leaving the editor. You can even change the EQ position by dragging within this tab. And you're probably thinking, that's great, but how do I adjust the channel strip components? We'll get to that in just a minute, but I'll give you a hint. In the center, as before, is the equalizer, but there are some serious improvements here. For one thing, there's now a built-in spectrum analyzer, so you can see exactly what effect your changes will have on the sound. You now have a pre-gain section with a high cut and low cut filter and phase invert. And you can now choose from a variety of EQ types on each band. The basic controls for gain, frequency, and Q are the same. You can hover over them and use the mouse wheel to adjust. But this icon in the corner allows you to change the presentation to more traditional knobs if you prefer. And like almost every control in Cubase, you can right-click and access the Quick Control Assignment and Automation Track. If you click the icon in the corner again, the controls disappear completely, giving you more room to work on the EQ curve. Basically, this allows you to cycle through all three display modes. You can double-click anywhere in the main control surface to create or move an EQ node. And right-clicking brings up options for preset control, invert EQ, and an A-B compare function. To the right are the send effects. One of the biggest improvements in Cubase 7 is the ability to right-click on a send effect slot and add an effect channel without leaving the editor. Just select the effect and configuration and click Add Track. The effects interface opens automatically, and you can click and drag on the colored bar in the slot to adjust the send level. At the bottom is the panning tab. And remember that with all of this functionality being moved out of the menus and onto the tab sets, you can navigate most of this without the use of a mouse. The last tab here is the QSense. This lets you adjust how much of this channel should go to each of your performer's headphone mixes. So if the singer in Studio One needs a little more, but the bass player in Studio Two needs a little less, you can make those adjustments right here. The last tab that we need to look at is back toward the center, the Channel Strip tab. Here you can access all five modules in the channel strip. You can use the preset manager to the left to load an entire strip set, or you can configure each component on its own. And notice that the EQ controls remain visible in the lower portion of the screen for complete control. Finally, you can even control the output chain from this same window by clicking on the Show Output Chain icon. And you can hide it again by clicking on the same icon. Now let's move on to the next chapter and look at the famous Vox & Go Curve EQ.